check, check, check. Money order. All on including cash. Y'all <laughs> right. hey, stand up.
Amen. Okay, it's time now to do our offering. Remember, the, the, the usher is in the back. He's dressed in brass. He's a little chubby fella. He's about that big around. But it's kind of flat-headed, okay? <laughs> They have a, the, the plate out there in the back. Just drop it in. If you've already dropped it in, that's cool. Or you can drop it in as you're leaving. But, but that's where it's at. But anyway, about it, we're going to go ahead whether you've dropped it in or not. If you, if you take it, if you got it, put it in your hand, hold it up. <clears throat> and if you've already put it in, just hold your hand up. Ready? I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. I will leave my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply. Give the Lord a hand back to praise. Yeah, yeah.
holy frog. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. How many know what today is? <laughs> It's Independence Day. I want to be independent of these allergies today. Look at somebody. You can move around now a little bit. Move around and shake somebody's hand. Tell me glad they're here. If you don't feel comfortable with it, just do it. The Bible said, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, pull, pull back and you get the, the little <coughs> symbol for bread. The Bible says, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he said, take eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now peel back the foil. Be careful. We're still to drink it, not wear it. <coughs> Bible says, now on that same night he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood in the New Testament. Drink it in remembrance of me. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank him for what he's done for us. That's the greatest independence of all. Independence from this world. Jesus Christ has got us. Amen. 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 Okay, get your... <coughs> I'm going to get there eventually. Trust me, I will. Get your Bible out and turn to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Stand for the reading of the Word. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Brother, I count not myself <clears throat> to have apprehended, but there's one thing I do, forget those things which are behind and reaching forth and those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God, of God in Jesus Christ, or in Christ Jesus. Now, <clears throat> just point your hands this way. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace <clears throat> and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you are alive and well and that you're on the throne. And we thank you, God, that you've got this. <clears throat> there is nothing impossible for you. Everything is in your hands and in your control. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Now, <clears throat> tell a story. There was a man trying to cross the street. Y'all might can relate to this. There's a man trying to cross the street, and as he steps off the curb, a car comes screaming around the corner and hits straight for him. True story. The man walks faster, trying to hurry across the street, but the car changes lanes, and is still coming at him. So the guy turns around <coughs> to go back, <coughs> but the car changes lanes again, and is still coming at him. By now, the car is so close, and the man is so scared that he just freezes. It stops in the middle of the street. The car gets real close and swerves at the last possible moment and screeches to a halt right next to him. The driver rolls down the window. The driver is a squirrel. The squirrel looks at the man in the eye and says, See, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> <laughs> The same with this sermon. He said, what's that got to do with July 4th? Well, because this has got to do with what we're talking about today. It's easier than, I couldn't even put it's easier than it looks, but I didn't. Getting past your past, Independence Day 2021. There's a lot of people in here, <clears throat> when it comes to salvation, yeah, you're saved. But when it comes to living your life, you're in bondage. Come on now, don't shout me down. When you live in your life, you, you, Jesus Christ has forgiven you, you know you're saved, 
but you're miserable. You live your life <clears throat> kind of in a bind. You know, I wanted to put this up here, but again, things happen so fast that I honestly, it slipped my mind. But I was going to put up there a pair of binoculars <clears throat> in the rearview mirror. Because a lot of us, we should be looking out the windshield, but instead of looking out the windshield, we're always looking in the rearview mirror or looking through binoculars. We got the binoculars on wondering what's going to be happening tomorrow. But, that, but that's anxiety. The rearview mirror is anxiousness and anxiety, but it leads to depression. And what it is, one's a depressing spirit, one's an anxious spirit. The rearview mirror is a depressing spirit filled with anxiety because you're always looking behind you. God died for us to have freedom. Not only freedom of sin, from sin, but freedom to live. And it's so hard for some people to understand how to get this freedom to actually live. And so, this is where this comes from. Getting past your past. Y'all say this with me. Yesterday ended last night. Y'all say it again. Yesterday ended last night. There's a time I had this in my office and I would use this when I was counseling. I'd pull up and go, look, yesterday ended last night. The problem is, if you're looking in the rear view mirror, it doesn't matter if it ended yesterday. Because that's all you can see. The only problem is, anybody ever tried to drive at 65, 70 miles an hour through the rear view mirror? Woo! You're all over the place. You make a big mess of everything. You're always having collisions. Is that your life? You're all over the place? You, know, you can't keep it on the road. You're always having collisions. Well, maybe it's because <clears throat> you haven't got this in your spirit yet. Yesterday ended last night. So now, look at this. Don't stumble over something behind you. Wow. I have found myself doing that so many times. Stumbling over stuff that I had no need to stumble over because it was behind me. How many, don't raise your hand, but how many lately have stumbled over something behind you? Amen? Something that should have already been gone, something that should already be behind you, but instead you're looking in the rearview mirror and that's all you can see. And remember, in the rearview mirror, you can't drive at correct speed because you can't see the road correctly. You can't see all the things around you. You're running over people. You're running over things. You're in a collision course constantly because you're in that rear view mirror versus looking through the windshield. So biblically, that's not what's happening biblically. Here it is. <coughs> and forgive me, I <coughs> it always hits, right? Yeah, it hits the down. A lot of this in here, but something hit me. And I'll get over it eventually. If I don't get over it, y'all bury me right here at the altar. That'll be nice, wouldn't it? We'll have communion. Just don't get any on the pastor. <laughs> Where's he at? He's down there on the floor. Amen. <clears throat> it'll, it'll stop eventually. All right. Philippians 3 and 13 and 14. We just read it. It instructs us to focus on the future, not the past. Focus on the future, not the past. Let me just back that up again. Let me see if I can back it up. Don't tell me now. You're going to act crazy. we got everything acting crazy today. How many here is acting crazy? <clears throat> yeah, everything has been absolutely crazy today. And then some. Facebook work. <clears throat> Let's see here. Hold on. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all say, just say, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody have, have any triple D, triple A batteries on them? Let's see. Again, <coughs> this is one of those days. <coughs> Let's see, I found a disc. I found a flat battery. And... Oh, here's some. I got some. The more we to baptize the heathen, we're going to beat this thing. <clears throat> I 
Thank you, sister. <coughs> something behind you. Let me just start right there again. How many, how many is trying to live life in the fast lane? You got everything going on, you can't even stop because so much is happening around you, but no matter, no matter how hard you try, you just keep running over people, you keep getting in trouble, you keep hitting things. It's because, it's because you're looking through your rear view mirror. You can't drive through your rear view mirror. I mean, tell somebody that. So you know where we're at. Now let's go. Here we go. Praise God. Y'all say praise God. Praise God. Okay, Philippians 3, 13 and 14 instructs us to focus on the future, not the past. This one thing I do, and when he says this one thing I do, it doesn't mean that he doesn't think about everything else around him, but he knows if he doesn't get this first, number one priority, this one thing I do, number one priority. If you don't get this, the rest of it's going to cause you a bunch of trouble. Okay? This one thing I do, forget those things which are behind. A lot of us have a lot of things behind us. And the problem is, we can't let go of them. And because we can't let go of them, we're trying to move forward, but we're dragging yesterday with us, and it causes a great big confusion. Forget those things which are behind, and reaching forth to those things which are before I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. So again, one thing, first, primary. In order to move forward, you got to let go of the past. Well, thank you, brother. Triples, that's good. Now I got plenty. Now I got plenty of them. Thank you, brother. Amen. He walked out while I was still up while I got him. All right. So we're going to keep on going. We're going to ride. We're going to, we're going to saddle this frog and ride him all the hop all the way out. Ready? I think we are. Not again. Oh, there you go. <laughs> rear view mirror. Somebody say rear view mirror. Praise God, it's working again. Rear view mirror. All right. One of life's greatest roadblocks is not the ones we see through the windshield. It's the ones that fill the rear view mirror. Have you ever been riding along? And the person behind you wants to get past you, and you don't see them, you don't even realize it, and they're back there raising their hands, flipping their lights, and flipping other things at you. <laughs> but it doesn't bother you because you're not looking. But then there's other people that get behind you doing the same thing, and you're ready to get out in the car and fight. Call called road rage. The person behind you already got it. When he meets the person in front that's got it, guess what? Somebody's going to get hurt. Amen? So, so, this is what happens right here. Watch, watch. Because we are imperfect human beings who lack perfect control over our thoughts. How many here have perfect control over your thoughts? Raise your hand, and then we'll talk about lying. Ready? No, no I'm not lying. You're right. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. The, 
there was a Sunday school teacher one time said, who was, who, who's planning on going to hell? Stand up. And I was a little bit fell. I stood up. She said, why are you standing up and planning on going to hell? I said, I don't want to, but <laughs> she said, why are you standing up? I said, well, you're standing there and I want you to be the only one standing up. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so here we go. Because we are imperfect, we lack perfect control over our thoughts, we become stuck in the past. Even though we know better, we get stuck. And then we blind our own self to the truth. Come on now, don't shout me down. It's always somebody else. Matter of fact, I guarantee you when I said that, immediately you, how many, all of a sudden you start thinking of somebody else. Don't raise your hand. Can't be me, God. Because I don't live back there. I don't have my rearview mirror. Well, I got, I got to tell you something. Everybody in this church has a problem from time to time looking in the rearview mirror and trying to drive. All of us. Every last one of us. I can't do anything about you looking in the rearview mirror. All I can do is try to stay out of your way when you're driving. But I can do something about me. The Lord says in Isaiah 43, Forget what happened before and do not think about the past. Now, these people are coming out of captivity. Forget those things which, as a matter of fact, some are still in captivity and they haven't even got out of it yet. Forget what happened before and do not think about the past. Look at the new thing I'm going to do. It's already happening. Don't you see it? I will make a road in the desert and rivers in the dry land. Or rivers, some of these people aren't even, they're still in bondage. They're still enslaved. And God's saying, get your mind off the past because I'm trying to do a new work in your life, but I can't do the new work in your life because you're looking in the rear of your mirror so hard that you can't see through the windshield. It's important. Say, God. Say, God. Help me. Use my rear view mirror for what it's intended for. Back in. Help me use my front, my windshield. For what it's made for. What it's made for. Driving. Driving. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Alright. So here we go. Watch this now. Instead of focusing our thoughts and our energies on the opportunities of today, we may allow painful memories to fill our minds. And when that fills your minds, it takes away your strength. And then you just can't seem to let go of the pain. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Anxiety. And depression. This is what, remember, the greatest book on psychology is the Bible. We're talking Bible now. This, Paul knew this. The greatest problem with, with anxiety and depression is this. It's like quicksand. Once anxiety and depression takes over, remember, looking in the past causes depression, but on the way down, anxiety takes over. And so now you've got a depressed spirit that's anxious. And so here you are, watch, you're in quicksand. And when you're in quicksand, you're trying to climb out of the quicksand, but you can't climb out of the quicksand because that hurts. You're stuck and it hurts. And because you're stuck, now you're trying to, you're trying to climb out, but that quicksand keeps pulling you back in. Why? Because you keep rehearsing the pain. You rehearse what somebody done to you. You rehearse what somebody said about you. You remember what your third grade teacher said about you. I'm 50 years old. I remember my third grade teacher said, and every time I start to do something, I remember the third grade teacher said about this situation, and it halts me, puts me in quicksand, gets me depressed, and I'm not sure I can do it anymore. <clears throat> How many has ever been playing ball? And along the way, somebody said, you'll never be a ball player. You can't play ball. There's no way you can play ball. You might as well quit while you're ahead. You'll never play ball. You'll never be able to hit that ball. You'll never be able to catch one. And every time you get up to bat, although you got your mind on the ball in the back of your mind, you're hearing, you'll never be in the bat. Why are you even trying? And you have to overcome that. And here's how you overcome it. Watch this. When we find ourselves in that quicksand, we have to have a plan. And that plan includes, number one, God's Word. God's Word says first and primary most is forgetting those things which are behind. I pressed. That word pressed means to give it everything you've got.
to give all your strength, give all your energy, all your emotions, all your spirituality, give everything you can, give it to God. I'm going to give my past to God. I'm going to give my future to God. I'm going to throw that away, and I'm going to press with everything I've got. I'm going to push beyond that little voice in the back of my head telling me that I can't do it. It's not going to work. They hurt me. If you're tired of the quicksand, that's the plan. Start out with God's Word. And once you start out with God's Word, God says, put it behind you, trust Him, give it all you got. Then you are got the plan on how to give it all you got. And when, watch this, as long as you're quick saying, you have no control. As long as you're quick saying, looking in the rearview mirror, not only you don't have any control, the pain gets worse. But if you work the plan and give it to God and do what God says, use His Word and His Word effectively, forgetting what's behind, pressing toward the mark in front of me, now I'm getting some control back. Now I'm finding some peace. It's not perfect control. It's not perfect peace yet. But I'm finding it because the quicksand is getting left behind. So, <coughs> so watch. You can rehearse the pain. You can relive it again and again. And it's going to be a predictable, unfortunate consequences. It's never going to stop. You wind up in a cycle. And you wonder, why do I keep going in this cycle? It's because you can't let go of the past. You're looking in the rearview mirror. And God says, leave it behind. God says it. Not David Linton. God said, put your past in the past and give everything you've got, press everything you've got, and you go forward. Because if you keep reliving the pain, you're going to get in that quicksand, you're going to lose control, and you're going to find yourself sinking deeper and deeper to one day you don't have anything left. So now, so now, I thank God he's got other plans. He says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. I try my best. I know it's not always easy. All of us have the same problem. When I feel the past coming up, sneaking up, knocking on the back of me, I say, look, I learned lessons. I'm not going to forget the lessons I learned, but I'm not going back there. Today is the day. Today is that. Tomorrow, I might not even be here. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of clear thinking. Today is the day that God is opening up the doors and doing things. So watch. You're hit, look, you're healed when you're, no longer, when you're no longer mad at the pain, the people, or the problems. Well, here we go. Now I'm meddling. So if I'm meddling, I'll just come on down here making a clear target so y'all ain't got to throw so hard. <laughs> How do you know when you're healed from all that in the past? When you're no longer mad at the pain, the people, or the problems God used to process you. Whoa. Whoa! Whoa. I can't say that enough. Whoa. I watched John Wayne movies the whole, you know, July 4th, you know, the whole weekend of John Wayne movies. Uh, I bet I heard him go, whoa, a hundred times yesterday. Whoa. 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 <laughs> now, I want you to ask them to do it. Whoa, it's me. <laughs> whoa, it's me. You'll know you're healed when you're no longer mad at the pain, the people, or the problems God used to process you. God may not have caused the pain. God may not have influenced the people. God may not have caused the problems. But the God we serve is so powerful, He can take all that junk and use it to make you better. He can take all that junk and use it to make you a stronger person. He can take all that junk that happened to you and use it that you can wind up helping other people going through the same thing. So here we are. We find ourselves focusing too intensely on the past. It's a sign that we need to focus on a more urgent need. Get ready. Y'all ready for this more urgent need? Y'all ready for this? We're talking about Independence Day, 4th of July. How many want some more, free, more freedom? I know you're already free. How many want more freedom? Amen. All right, get ready. Here we go. The need to forgive. All right. Watch this. Until we thoroughly and completely forgive, number one, 
those who hurt us, then they completely forgive ourselves. You know what I have a bigger problem with than forgiving others? Forgiving me. Because I say I should have known better. I preach it. I tell people all the time I'm a counselor. And then the great old famous, the most spiritual, the most spiritual self-talk you can have. That was stupid. Amen. Have you ever said that? Amen. That was stupid. Alright, so until you completely forgive, we're never fully freed from the past. So, forgive the, forgive the other things, but biggest always forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Cut yourself a little slack. Forgiveness does not change the past, but it gives the future a chance. Why? Forgiveness does not change the past, but it gives the but it gives the future a chance. So, so watch this. Colossians 3 and 13, NLT. Make allowance for each other's faults. Really? We have a here's what we do. We judge ourselves. <coughs> by our intentions. We judge other people by their actions. I know the officer said, this is not the 4th of July message I was looking for. I'm sorry. No, Forgive me. <laughs> you had good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I already had a, I look, I had a, look, look, I had to put up with these guys back here playing. Look, I'm cheesy. <laughs> and I had to add to it, cheesy like macaroni. <laughs> oh, look, we started praying. Hey, listen, I feel the pain. I feel the pain. <laughs> All right, ready? Here, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Make allowance for each other's fault because we judge ourselves by our intent, but we judge others by their actions. Why do we do that? It's a normal human response. Why? Because you know your intentions. Have you ever hurt somebody, but your intentions were not to hurt them? Have you ever helped somebody, but it wound up hurting them? Have you ever, you know, you had all great intentions? But the other person didn't realize it because they weren't, they couldn't see your intentions. All they see is your actions. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you something else. When you get to heaven, get ready for this. Y'all ready? Well, this is good stuff. Breakfast of champions. When you get to heaven, some of your good deeds are not going to be counted as good deeds. They're going to burn up behind you. Because God doesn't judge your deeds. He judges your intentions. because he knows what you're thinking. So, some of the things you think are sin are going to wind up causing problems because you hurt somebody. You'll find out that God's judging your intentions and says, well, you hurt them, but I know your intentions, so I'm going to give you grace on that and I'm going to reward you for that. Wow. Wow. That's God. So, 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 if I judge me by my intentions, by judging by your actions, then, you know what? There's no really clear judgment there because my judgment is skewed. And the majority of the time, that's how we do it. My intentions, your actions. And so because of that, we really can spend some tangled webs trying to help someone, cause them pain. They're trying to get out of pain. They want to hurt you and blah, 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 blah. And if the truth be known, in the very beginning, there was nothing ill planned. It was always good. But we judge ourselves by our intentions. We judge everybody else by their actions. You know, uh, uh, I can tell somebody when they're, when they're trying to be, be uh, make an allowance for somebody because they'll do, somebody will do something crazy and the other person will say, well, you know, I, I, yeah, that was bad, but I really believe that their heart was in it. They're judging them, trying to judge them or give them an allowance for their intentions. 
Make allowances for each other's fault. Forgive anyone who offends you. Really? Anyone? Come on now. Anyone? God, have you seen what? Have you watched that? Do you know what? Were you, were you over there? Did you see what they did to me? And God says, yep. Forgive them. I, you know, I, if my daddy had been gone, I hear it now. Hurt, didn't it? <clears throat> Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So now, yesterday ended last night. Today's a brand new day. And it's yours. So I'm getting ready to close. Ready? Focusing too intently on the past is almost without exception futile. I like that word futile. You know where I got that word futile from? You're going to say, oh, it's from your, all your education. No, I got it from Star Trek, the next generation. <laughs> the Borg said, resistance is futile. <laughs> and I said, wow, that sounds like a good spiritual thought. Resistance is futile. Ready? Get ready. No amount of anger, no amount of bitterness, can change what happened yesterday. Here we go again. Quit meddling, preacher. Can you just quit meddling? I had, I had my, I had it all figured out. I knew who to talk to, who not to talk to. I knew what to do, what not to do. I had it all figured out. And now, God, you got to meddle in it. Woo! No amount of anger, no amount of bitterness can change what happened yesterday. Listen, tears can't change the past. Regrets can't change the past. Our worries can't change the past. Our complaints won't change the past. Look at that little guy, guy. What you say there, mate? <laughs> I wish I could simply put the past is and always will be the past forever. The past is and always will be the past forever. Future, or excuse me, failure is an event, not a person. Yesterday ended last night. Get ready, get ready to close right now. I'm on the way out of here. Y'all ready? Somebody's going, praise God, please stop. Yeah. Please stop. Have you ever heard somebody that they're singing or they're doing something? Please stop. Please stop. Yeah. I remember I was in there practicing one day with my guitar and I'm singing for praise and worship, getting going and, and, and living, walking outside. And I said, I thought you liked my singing. She says, I do. I said, why you walk outside? She says, I just don't want neighbors to think I'm beating you. <laughs> Can you summon the courage and wisdom? And I might just point one out. I've got them coming back. Because this is everybody. This is not one person. Nobody, not one person singled out here. This is the Declaration of Independence that God gave us. This is for everybody. Can you summon the courage and the wisdom to accept your past and move on with your life? Can you accept the reality that yesterday and all the yesterdays before it are gone? Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away, but now I keep it and look at it every day. Oh, I can't get rid of yesterday. Why can't I let it go? I don't know. It just keeps on staying. <laughs> That's a good song, isn't it? Paul McCartney, when he used it, if he was, if he, oh, they don't let him hear it because he'll steal it. I don't want him to steal it. All right. Can you entrust all your yesterdays to God? That's my question. Can you give it to him? That's one of the hardest things to do, 
And, and look, it's like that hair club guy says, I'm not just the president of a hair club, I'm a member. I'm not just preaching it, I have to do the same thing all the time. Remember, if this is directed to any one person, I'll, take, I'll say it's directed to me. But you know what? I got more sense than that. I know that it goes to everybody. This is one size fits all. I gave y'all a gift that everybody can wear. <laughs> fits everybody. Ready? With God's help, you can entrust all your yesterdays to God. Get ready, because I'm getting ready. Now I'm getting ready. DC, BJ, y'all come up here and play something. Play something pretty. Ready? You can't change the past on what you should have done. Should have, could have, would have. Should have, could have, would have. Should have, could have, would have. I go to B5 tomorrow. I'll be in there at B5 and all those, I have those, those heroin addicts. And you know what I get here all the time? All the time. Should have, could have, would have. Should have, could have, would have. Should have, could have, would have. Guess what? Should have, could have, would have. Ain't going to get it. You can't change the past on what you should have done. But you can change the present and the future of what you do and what you will do. So get ready. Get ready close. Here's some, here's some awesome quotes. Shake the dust from your past. Move forward in his promises, K. Arthur. Leave the broken, irreversible past in God's hands. And step out into the invisible future with him, Oswald Chambers. We can't just put our past behind us. We got to put our past in front of God. Bethlehem. Woo, that was awesome. We just can't put our past behind us. We got to put it in front of God. Here it is, God. I don't know what to do with it. I, got, I don't know what to do with it. And then the Lord says, forget what happened before. Do not think about the past. Look at the new thing I'm going to do. It is already happening. Don't you see it? I will make a road in the desert and rivers in the dry land. Wow. Wow. One more time. The Lord says, forget what happened before. Do not think about the past. Dwell on the past. Look at a new thing I'm going to do. It has already happened. Don't you see it? I will make a road in the desert and rivers in the dry land. Everybody see it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You notice I said this is part one because I couldn't do all this in one day, especially on July 4th. So we're going to finish it next week, then we're going right into the seals of Revelation. Forgiveness. It takes the 
shoulder. He's in front of me. A lot bigger than me, too. He turned around. And when he turned around and looked at me, I said, I love you, brother. He busted out crying. He turned around and grabbed me. He said, I love you, too. He said, I've always loved you like a son. So suddenly he asked him all these questions. I remember the grace blanket. And that day, the Holy Ghost did, in 30 seconds, what couldn't have been done in five years. And it all started, I really believe, is when I started pulling that grace blanket. He goes, 
to the kitchen and goes, something stinks in this kitchen. And he goes somewhere else and goes, one of the front porch says, even stinks on the porch. So he steps outside of it and smells that little burger cheese. And just as I thought, the whole world stinks. It was a Limburger cheese in his mustache. Some of us have some Limburger cheese in our mustache and blaming everybody else. They sure stink. Yeah, I reckon they do. Everybody gonna stink. So, third on Tuesday night, we're gonna talk about attitude. Attitude is everything. Alright? God is good. All the time. All the time. Very good. So look, look, that grace blanket, sometimes you toss it, sometimes you gotta wrap up. Sometimes you're going to be like a bullfighter and do like this. But that grace bike will save you. Amen? God's got it. Oh, God. Let's see.